All right. Thanks for coming. And uh, my name is Carol Chen. I'm going to give a presentation about Manage IQ. Um, this is, I think, the last session for the day for this track. And uh, so I thank all of you for being here and also for FOSS Asia for uh, accepting my talk. And so I have the chance to be here to speak to you. Um, if you notice, probably there's um, another session supposedly after this on uh, Manage IQ integration with Ansible which was supposed to be de delivered by my colleague uh, Daniel Korn, but unfortunately um, uh, he had a family emergency and was not able to make it the, the trip at all. So, um, but um, I hope I could just give you an intro to Manage IQ and uh, maybe at future events we'll give you more detailed uh, presentations on the different integrations with Manage IQ, which you will learn um, it's a very powerful uh, tool. Doesn't it? Okay. So, what does Manage IQ do? Um, as you see, saw in the previous slide, it's an open source management platform, and it has um, the ability to discover, control, and optimize your hybrid uh, environment. Uh, I'll go into more details about what what each of these mean uh, in the f uh, future slides, in the later slides. But first, a brief history about myself, <laughs> an intro about to myself. Uh, my nickname is uh, Saibat. That's probably the easiest way to uh, find me online because Carol is quite a common name, Carol Chen even. So um, if you just search for Saibat, most of the stuff should be related to me. So um, I was actually from Singapore. I mean, I lived in Singapore for 14 years, but I left in 1996. So gives you a rough idea of Okay, <laughs> somebody's pro protesting. So that was almost 20 years ago, or more than 20 years ago, uh, I left Singapore to study uh, in US. And after I graduated, uh, I joined Nokia uh, Dallas in Dallas. And um, when I was working for Nokia, I kind of got uh, acquainted with some open source projects, one of which was uh, Helix. Uh, it's a vi video engine. It's a cross-platform uh, vi video engine. I was working in the multimedia department. So I kind of got interested in you know, like the open source way of working. But uh, it wasn't really until later on when I left Nokia and got more involved in community events and um, um, kind of, uh, if you know Migo, which was like the joint uh, effort between Intel and Nokia for open source uh, internet devices that I got really more uh, acquainted with you know, the open source community, ways of working and collaboration. I really got um, passionate about all, all it stood for and um, the way it encourages uh, participation and innovation. So after leaving Nokia, I joined uh, Yola. I'm, I'm not sure if anybody has heard of that company before. <laughs> Okay, somebody pointed <laughs> there. It's a startup, a mobile startup that um, kind of based uh, some of the um, stuff from Migo using the same Mercore and um, uh, created um, our own operating system called Sailfish OS, which is, um, uh, you know, it's a Linux-based uh, mobile operating system and, um, uh, you know, it's, it's really, like, um, efficient for mo mobile phones and, uh, so through that, um, I forgot to mention I was a software engineer in Nokia for like eight and a half years and when I joined Yola, I went into more like community outreach and developer engagement type of uh, role. So that's also similarly what I'm doing now in Red Hat, which I joined last year. And um, so here I am one year after that, now in Fast Asia speaking to you and back in Singapore, my one of my homes, I have like four different homes, so <laughs> I'm very happy to be here. And um, more of an unrelated note, uh, I also play in an orchestra, so that's kind of like, I always say if I've never gone uh, into this industry, I hope to be like a full-time musician somewhere, but that dream probably will never come true. But, you know, it's a side hobby, project, whatever. So now, enough about myself. Here's uh, kind of a history about Manage IQ. 
Um, so Mindshark actually had, um, has been around for quite a while. It, it was founded in 2006. Um, I, I should probably get more uh, information from the founders and, and the, one of some of the engineers who has been in the project for a longer time to learn about some interesting stories I can share at uh, talks and events like this. But um, kind of the uh, key uh, dates are when Red Hat acquired Manage IQ in 2012. And then, of course, you know, Red Hat being an uh, open source company, um, they you know, got the co code into shape and uh, all the licenses in place and open source did in 2014. Um, anybody uh, besides Red Hatters uh, know which Red Hat product is based on the Manage IQ project? Thank you very much. Well, well, well done, Cloud Forms. So uh, similarly, you know, like Fedora versus RHEL, Overt versus RAV. So Manage IQ is the upstream open source version of Red Hat Cloud Forms. Um, so you can see some of the um, um, kind of uh, milestones, and one of it, which is uh, the first design summit we had, was oh, actually I don't have the date here, but it was in 2014. And we had the second one last year. I helped to organize it when I uh, came on board. I'll have more information about events and stuff at, at, the, at the end. So um, yes, being where I've been trying to you know, build up more community involvement and um, uh, hoping to get more people interested in the project. So even though um, it has been only kind of open source quite recently in a couple of years, two, two and a half years. But it has, uh, you know, getting already a lot of contributions. Of course, mainly from um, the uh, Red Hat engineers who are working on the project uh, and for the CloudForms product. But also we have different partners in the community as well helping us. So um, recently we have also been uh, splitting the repo, the main Manage IQ repo into sub-repos because um, it was kind of, uh, it was growing quite a lot with uh, you know, different providers, different new features. So it got to a point that it's, it's not very you know, uh, efficient and it's very just a monolithic um, thing. And we want to kind of make it into a more platform thing, pluggable and modular. So things are more um, uh, on, in the process of being more modular and the UI has been split out. Different providers are in the process of being split into their own repos, and um, and we found that actually, uh, w when this is happening, we are getting more co uh, commits, more uh, PRs, more um, activities because the velocity got increased as as the modules are smaller and more manageable, and they have their own test suites and um, services. So things are also more efficient. So, so talking about the partners, some of these here are some of the partners that we work, have worked with to um, add capabilities into Manage IQ. Um, I won't go into the details, it's just uh, some of the companies. So um, this is a high level architecture diagram. In a nutshell, Manage IQ is what we call a manager of managers, or if you will, a, a meta manager. It does not replace actually some of these um, element managers you might be familiar with, like VMware vCenter, uh, Kubernetes, where you know you manage container clusters, and so on. But um, what it does is it creates API connections to the different element managers, and then it gets the information through this API and then uh, creates this unified um, view or dashboard that you can see what's happening to the di different um, providers and different elements. Another view which uh, kind of give a better uh, picture of all the different types of providers we support, which is not, not just cloud. So you know, for, for the longest time we say this is a cloud management platform, but it's really not just clouds. It's also like from middleware to containers. Uh, to software-defined networking and storage, so um, so they have uh, you know, each individually have have the API connections to manage IQ and 
through the Manchac interface, you can drill down to the different uh, levels and get more information, get reports, um, you know, uh, check the resources ut uh, utilization, and so on and so forth. So um, we can start with one of the main features. I mean, one of the features of uh, Manage IQ, which is uh, self-service. So what it does is um, through a service catalog, you have you know different configurations. And users can just select um, what they want and submit the re request. And um, well, service request management is nothing new, but um, the the key thing is things are all automated. Previously, maybe like with a manual um, fulfillment of the request, it may take days for somebody, or even up to weeks, depending on the system. But with the um, in Manage IQ, we have this um, workflow orchestration process, which helps to automate all this stuff, and it will just take tens of minutes to you know, come back with the uh, resources needed to fulfill the request. So you know, that definitely speeds up things, makes things more efficient. Um, but that's not sufficient. Um, what, what happens when the resource, uh, resources are done with? What do you do with them? You know, so we also have full, that's why we say complete lifecycle management, where um, you define the rules, what happens, you know, certain time frame or certain conditions where you have to retire the resources that you deployed. So, you know, there's, there's clear ownership rules, how, how to go about managing this for the retirement phase. All right. So this is an example of the, um, a, a service catalog where you can select, you know, whether you want uh, Amazon, uh, the deployment or, or, or RHEL or um, what's the yes, VMware. And then you can select even multiple. You don't have to like, you know, get one uh, implemented, deployed, wait for the next one and so on because uh, there's this shopping cart functionality where you can just select multiple or select all and say I, you know, send one request for all of them. And then the automation, the, the, the automated provisioning happens so um, uh, Manage IQ will, will um, pr uh, provision those uh, everything configured according to what's uh, specified in the service catalog. And uh, regarding the uh, provisioning, the automation part, there are two ways to do it. Uh, previously, the main way is to um, use the uh, native uh, Manage IQ, which is uh, writing scripts in Ruby. And this may not be for everyone. It's kind of a very um, involved process and quite quite complicated. There's like even a thick book written just on this automation topic. Uh, but with the recent integration with Ansible, which I think a lot of people uh, are familiar with, you can use uh, actually use playbooks to um, automate some of this stuff. So um, you know, but there's a choice. You can do it either way, whether na natively or with uh, Ansible. Um, one of the other key features in Manage IQ is what we call continuous discovery. So what this does is that um, when, once you have connected a certain provider to Manage IQ, it will um, continuously uh, check the resources, discover the inventory and the relationship between the um, instances, and gather all this information. So um, and also when there are updates, it listens for them, and then it will. It will uh, reflect that those updates in, in the uh, system as well. So tracking all these data and configurations over time, um, which will help with, with also uh, later on, we'll talk about root cause analysis, um, because you have all this history of data. And to go more in depth, um, we have what we call smart state analysis, which has a nickname called fleecing. Um, if you know fleecing, like uh, fleecing a sheep, you pull back the wool, you expose some stuff, but in a non-destructive way. So you know, instead of just getting the metadata, like the names of the VMs and the hypervisors they run on, you're also getting like you know the, the type of apps they have and the types of user accounts and things like that, more in-depth information. So um, with lifecycle management. You basically get the visibility and control over the of the instances over their whole life cycle um, from you know the, their history and uh, you can clone the the instances or migrate them from 
different providers and um, retire them or even you know suspend them the, the, the power functions shut down suspend and so on so you have access to all of that so yeah talking about the root cause analysis because uh, manage IQ gathers and tracks this uh, performance data and configuration information over time so with this history information you can if something changes you can pinpoint when it happened and what changes caused it to happen and with you know de uh, detailed um, these are called topology graphs you can see the relationships between the VMs which ones they are being uh, uh, deployed from and so through that you can also again go down into the layers and see what were the underlying issues and you know solve solve the problems through that um, okay so not just problems and you know um, uh, finding out information that way but you also want to optimize the system and again because of um, monitoring and uh, tracking things that has been utilized, the resource utilization, uh, you, Manichakin can use this information to, um, to kind of get trends and then predict future usage. So you can suggest, you know, like maybe you can, uh, for this, you can uh, deploy things, uh, instances of this size, uh, so you can, you know, better utilize uh, your, all your resources. So in this way, you can optimize the system. So policies, um, again, with all this information drawn from uh, smart state analysis, you can uh, define policies whether in, in two ways, either across all the um, environments that you have. For example, you can say, okay, all the root users across all my environments will have this type of access. Or you can say, um, uh, like, okay, uh, firewall uh, access. So for production environments, I want this set of rules, but for um, uh, development er environments, they are more you know, uh, permissive or something. So you can enforce different uh, policies for that. And um, with uh, resource utilization, you want to find out, um, for example, uh, this user, how much it, he or she is using, and this platform, you know, what type of uh, usage is being um, um, consumed. So you can uh, rates apply to uh, compute, memory, storage network, and you can use this information and get chargeback and showback uh, data, which is a uh, showback is just reporting the data. And then also, you know, monitor the usage. If somebody's using too much, you know, figure out if you, you want to have some rules against that or charge them more. So all these cool features of Managed IQ, but what platforms of what providers are supported? Well, um, traditional uh, virtualization platforms like um, you know, VMware, like uh, Microsoft Hyper-V, like Ovirt, uh, which is the um, open source version of Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization. Um, you can you know, provision VMs uh, and all, all those um, things we mentioned going to uh, smart state analysis of the VMs and so on. Of course, clouds, have cloud management platform, Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure, uh, Azure, how, how do you pronounce it? <laughs> and um, Amazon. And, um, you know, nowadays containers are being used everywhere. We also have um, full container management through uh, OpenShift, which is another pro product uh, supported by Red Hat. And um, we have, uh, you know, advanced containers uh, scanning, and you can check for vulnerabilities and making sure everything is secured. So um, I think that's mm, the overview of the features. More about the project itself. Manage IQ releases are roughly in a six months, six to eight months well in the actually for the past four releases about six month cycle and uh, we named them alphabetically Anand, Botvinnik, Capablanca, Darga and Elva who, who can s who knows what's the relationship between these names 
Great. All right. So um, because the um, one of the founders of of Manage IQ is a avid chess player, and so he, you know, name after <laughs> name other releases after uh, chess masters. Oops, went too far. And actually, our next release will be named after the American uh, grandmaster uh, Ruben Fine. So we're going to have a Fine release coming up. <laughs> and uh, I think in a week or so, we're going to vote on the name of the G release. So if you're interested, check out. Uh, we'll have links later on on the website uh, when when's the voting taking place and cast your vote. You can get to name our next release. So uh, as I was saying previously about the first summit being 2014, so last year we had a second summit. And you can see we have a crazy bunch of people, <laughs> fun bunch of people. And we even have a chess summit uh, going on by Oleg, who is the, um, our chess master. Um, so what chess summit means that he goes one player to the next, he, one person playing nine people at the same time. And he beat them all. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, it was really fun. That's, that's, I guess that's, you know, one way we party. <laughs> and also there's this um, hallway track, which as you know, in conferences, that's always sometimes even more interesting some, than some of the presentations. Although I think this one coincided with the coffee break, so. Um, more events, we have uh, actually quite a lot of um, recently more and more interest about the project. So we have been getting requests and also people have been uh, just kind of organizing uh, meetups to learn more about the project or, you know, work on it. So here are some of them. And if you notice, they are um, mainly in Europe for now. And we have some in the US as well. And um, like the Manage IQ Summit was in, in the US last year and the, the, the two years, three years ago. But uh, we are also hoping that um, we get more uh, interest in Asia region, Asia Pacific region, and we, we can have more events in, in these places as well. Uh, actually, we were in PyCon Pune uh, last month. Was it last month? Yeah. And um, because um, some of the QE stuff is written in Python, so. Uh, that's kind of related. So maybe there'll be more. Okay, so um, <laughs> we are trying to com come up with an avatar for or mascot for the, for the project. And remember what I said about the name, nick other nickname for Smart State Analysis? Anyone? Anyone? Amazing. Yes, thank you. So <laughs> if you might see a bit of relation with that. But um, it's, it's funny because um, we had that design for our last year's Red Hat Summit. Um, and somebody called it a bunny goat because it has long horns or ears that look like, make it look like a bunny. And it has a sharp face, which looks more like a goat than a sheep. I don't know. But you know, it kind of uh, uh, also go with the whole hybrid theme, I guess. So, but um, we have been having some interesting designs by some of the community guys. So, you know, just saying that sometimes a contribution to an open source project is not just about coding, but it, there's, there's different ways of, of um, participating. So, um, because for, for example, for myself, when I first uh, learned about project, I was quite overwhelmed, or, or, you know, because it's a huge um, platform and it's written in Ruby on Rails, which I have no idea about, because even though I've been an engineer for a while, I've never touched Ruby. but um, I still up to today I don't really know how to contribute code wise but you know there's many ways to um, be involved in the project. So I hope I've you know given you a kind of an overview of what the project's about and how you might if you're interested uh to to um you know uh collaborate or connect with us. So just basically remember manage IQ because even though I list all these URLs over here, it doesn't really matter. You just have to, the main thing, manageiq.org, you can anyway connect to most of these channels. Uh, we have, of course, GitHub account and uh, the Gitter is our chat tool of choice. We're not so much on IRC anymore nowadays, but Gitter is anyway tied to GitHub account. I think GitLab as well. We didn't GitLab merge with them recently. Yeah, exactly. So. 
So you can use that. Talk is our um, kind of forum and um, all these social channels. And if you want to reach me, again, Cybat, um, just Google it. So um, I think that's about it. I'm in my own time. Well, right on time. So any questions, feedback? If not, I have some cool stuff here. I have bags, I have uh, stickers. I need to find them in my bag. And um, some mi microfiber cloths, which are useful for cleaning glasses and phone screens and stuff like that. So come on and grab something. And thank you for your time.